So as the co-writer of the franchise, what's it like for you now to kind of take the helm and top to bottom design the film? Is it really liberating? Yeah, it's uh, it's a big piece of meat. It's very exciting. It's got a lot of pressure on it, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's the big toolbox. It's the biggest toolbox of toys you could possibly have. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Can you talk a little bit about Treadstone, which is the program that Jason Bourne is a part right. of in the first film, and then Outcome, which is the program that Jeremy Renner's character is a part of in this film, and then kind of the differences that right. that creates in their characters. We've been talking about the Flowers for Algernon aspect of Oh, really film. cool. No, that's good. I like that. <laughs> um, uh, the Treadstone program was, uh, we're saying now, what you didn't realize was Edward Norton's actually been sitting beside you in the theater for 13 years, and he built all that. Um, the Treadstone program was one of the early programs that they did, and they were assassins, purely assassins. And um, it was sold, shopped out, franchised to the CIA. The program that Jeremy Renner is part of is something called Outcome, and they're, they're, they're designed more as uh, very isolated, long-term people, sort of warrior spies who dig into environments and spend a long, long time there being very immersive. Um, uh, the Treadstone program that, that Jason Bourne is part of, when it goes public at the end of Ultimatum, um, it, it threatens exposure, and the one other program that, that Edward Norton has built that's threatened by that is outcome. And that's the problem of our movie, is that Jeremy Renner's program has to be torn down uh, so that they can stay safe. You know, Bourne is, of course, known for great action and for right. really grounded characters. But I think one of the things that I really connected to as well is it felt like it had these three themes. One, the will to survive, even the, even the organization's will to survive right. from Edward Norton's point of view. And then two, sort of the human willingness to follow orders in the face of all reason not to. Right. And then the dichotomy between the idea of the greater good and the will of the individual. What are some of the kind of the themes that born, this born legacy is bringing to fans? Well, there's a line in there, you know, that Edward has a line to, uh, to Jeremy. We are, you know, we are, we are morally indefensible and absolutely necessary. And that's a conflict that I think a lot of people are, you know, facing whether they're voting or doing the thing itself. I mean, it's a really complicated question. And, you know, we don't start off when, you, when you're starting off the, designing a movie like this, you don't start off with these greater themes. You really start with the characters and what do they do next and where's the danger and how's it going to work. And you're hoping that, you know, your worldview and these complexities come out in it. And, and, and these three characters are all very compromised in, 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 in really different and interesting ways. Um, Rachel Weisz's character is made some really interesting choices, moral choices with her life. Um, and, and Jeremy's character, unlike Jason Bourne, who couldn't remember who he was and thought he was a good person, uh, that sort of morality tale, for Aaron Cross, he remembers everything that happened to him and he knows exactly where he came from. And that really is his problem, is he doesn't want to go back to where he was before. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to seeing this on AMC screen. Great. Thanks a lot.